the goal of this video is I want to tell you about some things that you can do to get more activity on your uh, Flippa auctions. And when you get more activity, that means the bids go up because the more people, the more exposure you get, the more uh, people bidding on the things. Uh, you know, the fact is people want what other people want, <laughs> right? So if you got nobody bidding on your auction, then others aren't going to bid on it. But if you got, you know, 15, 20 people bid on your auction, then other people are going to bid and they're going to bid more in order to get it. Okay, so the trick here is getting more bids. Hands down, to get more bids, first thing you can do, use the featured listing. Okay, it's only 29 bucks, and it will get you a lot more exposure. It's very, very effective, and it's worth the 29 bucks. You know, provided you think your site's going to, you know, sell for over 100 bucks or so. Um, I suggest you do a five-day listing. Start at a dollar and no reserve. That makes things very, very appealing to people. They figure, okay, I've got an opportunity to get in here. Uh, pretty inexpensively and that gets you initial bids and then those initial bids in turn get you more interested bids. Now I'm going to tell you something that is somewhat of a sneaky tactic. Okay, If you're new to Flippa, when you uh, create your auction and people bid on it, those bids actually have to be approved by you Okay, initially when they first are made. Um, once you approve it, then, yes, it's a binding bid, and it goes public. Everybody knows about it. So what people usually do is when you list it, you're going to get a lot of bids right away, and they'll go in and they'll approve those bids okay, as soon as they come in. But what you're going to do is a little bit different. When you get that first little flood of bids, you're going to find the lowest one and approve it, and then completely ignore the others for 12 hours. Okay, so 12 hours later, don't even worry. Go go work on your next project. Okay, don't even worry about what's coming in. Don't reply to messages, nothing. And then what you do is 12 hours later, you come in and you got probably a whole bunch of bids piled up because since it's such a brand new, only one person bid on it kind of thing, and the bid is very, very low, you're going to get a lot of other people that want to jump in thinking that they have an opportunity to pick up something wicked cheap, right? Well, what you do then is you accept all the bids at once. And then you just let the auction run. You respond to all the messages. You leave, uh, you know, if there's any comments that need to be added, stuff like that. And you accept bids as they come in from that point. Now, the reason that you do this and how this actually works is it'll give your auction the appearance that it's a wicked, hot, popular auction in demand. And that is going to make it more desirable to others because remember people want what other people want so what's gonna you know appear here is like man they're like more than 15 bids in the first 24 hours they're gonna be like I want that if you go in and you just accept the bids as they come in then you're not gonna get as much activity because a lot of times uh, this is and this is actually cool it works in your favor if initially some guy you know, maybe he bids 500 bucks on your site and you accept that right away. Other people are going to be like, well, yeah, I'm not even going to bid because that's that's too high for me already. Whereas if the bid is five bucks, the one that's showing, right, then they're going to be like, OK, yeah, I'll bid. So you will get more bids because that, you know, initially that high bid that got in there didn't get posted because you didn't approve it. So you got a whole bunch of other bids. And then once you get all those extra bids, now you've got you know a greater amount of people that are interested, and that's going to cause that uh, auction to show us something that's really, really hot. People are interested in it. Okay? So that's the strategy there. It's kind of like um, it's a little sneaky way to get 
a little more interest going on. Now, one thing about sites that you put up, obviously sites that make money are worth more. So I mentioned this, um, you know, in the last video that if you can, you know, and you want to hold on to a site for a little while and let it actually make some revenue and you have a way that you can prove that, hey, this site makes, you know, blah, blah, blah on a pretty regular basis, it's going to be worth a whole lot more. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that. You don't have to wait. If you make a good site and set it up, and that's all you want to do is set it up, make it work, and sell it. Totally fine. Okay, no problems there. Good-looking sites sell for more. If you go out there and you just set up some generic-looking template or uh, you know some kind of ugly web page, it's not going to make that much. It just isn't. Uh, people want to see something that looks visually appealing. If you can, uh, it's a good idea to add Google Analytics to your site because that helps you show proof. You can say, hey, I get X amount of hits every day, X amount of hits every month, You know, depending on how long you're going to be holding on to the site. And that really is only a factor if you're going to hold on to the site for a little while. Don't hype up your site. There's nothing more unattractive than seeing an auction where somebody says, this site makes me $30 a month, but it has a potential to make 50 you know, grand a year, uh, or it has a potential to make $3,000 a month. Well, if it has that potential and you really think it does, then why don't you do what needs to be done to make it make that much money? Okay? <laughs> so don't hype it up. Don't, you know, just be honest with people, tell them what it is, and they will appreciate you for it, and it'll actually work in your favor. When I see sites that say, you know, um, this is a new site, it's not making me any money yet, uh, but it has the potential to do five grand a month, I'm like, yeah, okay, next. And I get the feeling that a lot of other people are the same way. Tell them why you're selling the site. In the listing, it's a good idea to... Um, they're going to be curious as to, you know, why are you getting rid of this site? So it's a good idea to let them know. Just tell them, hey, um, I enjoy setting up websites and writing content and doing graphics. I enjoy this and that and the other thing and researching new projects. Um, and that's what I want to do is set these up and then sell them. So, uh, you know, tell them instead of you having to outsource and get all that stuff done, it's already been done. This is a turnkey project. And this is what I love doing, and that's why I'm selling it. Now, what I want to put forth to you is a bit of a challenge. Okay, because let me tell you what usually happens with um, training videos like this. People are excited about it. They buy it. They check it out, and they're like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, and they never do it. I don't want that to happen to you. So what I want you to do is don't do it today because, you know, you might have watched a lot of videos today. Maybe you're tired, you're worn out. But tomorrow, I want you to start doing your niche research. And I want you to make your first site within the next seven days. And that's totally doable even for a newbie. Okay. Um, go out there, do your niche research, do your keyword research, uh, qualify the niche, make sure it's a good competitive market that you can rank for um, just to add value to your website and get a PLR product. They're very inexpensive. Just go to Google, do a search. There's tons out there. Again, do try to find one that's good quality that includes source graphics, uh, you know, website graphics, stuff like that, and gives you the source files so that you can edit them and and set it all up rock and roll list it on flippa